think called the Monday, June 15th, 2020 uh, Burrone Select Board originally scheduled meeting to order. Uh, with us is Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith, John Quinn, I'm Brad Town. Um, with us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I'm here also. Can you hear us? Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and on phone is, is Angelina yes. Capra. Okay. Um, I have on here the talking about the grader, but I would like to take that off and put it on when Tim starts. And we have the email that I'm hearing is out there. So I don't have yet. So the grader is off. What are you talking about? What email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the company to the test center and also the repairs that were needed. Oh, okay. So like, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, public comment. Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Um, Jim, Jill Rennick from the Property Evaluation and Review Division with the city, sent me a note, and probably a lot of you might have seen this, but she's replying in, as far as like the FY21 tax, the tax rates for the school. They do anticipate having the tax rates available July 1st, which is the normal time they have them. And normally, the very first um, meeting we have in July, we set the tax rate. So I wanted to make you aware of that, you know, I'd like to put that on the agenda, hopefully we can do that. But um, the, only, the only issues that she is thinking that is because um, people can file their taxes later this year, a lot of people won't have the uh, state payment information. So we would have to, if I were to do the payments, I assume to send the tax bills out by like July 15th, which I'd like to, uh, then chances are very good that I have to do an awful lot of um, revised bills, which I do every year anyways. Okay, but just to make you aware, that's, you know, I am going to put that on the agenda and I'd like to talk about it for next time around. At least this is good news, because I was, at first she was talking, like a couple of weeks ago, she was saying, would he be ready? And now they do anticipate it being ready for July 1st. So hopefully for me on July 6th, I'll have that information. Plus, uh, the, I know the assessors, but they did the grievances last Wednesday, and they anticipate they'll have that information for this Wednesday, so they can find a friend list and complete that task. Okay. So we'll have all of that information for the next meeting. And otherwise than that, everything else that I have is on there. I have a question about the delinquent taxes. Um, mm -hmm. Is the amount higher or lower than it was last quarter? It is still a little higher because right now, right now is today, there's $250,000 that's owed in back taxes. And it's usually, it's not too far from that. It's usually like two twenty five dollars at this time. Of year. Okay. I'm just trying to, to measure whether it's get it starting to get harder for people or right people are and that's up. you know I think um, a lot of people are you know just as people that are probably not working right now yeah but most all of the businesses have paid us okay there's only one particular that has not which is kind of a large one um, and like I say I'm, I'm you know some people actually have paid uh, some of the stuff that they owed in the past even because I think that they have been getting some money from the government and they <coughs> So that's good news there, but I'm a little further behind than I'd like to be at this point in time. So okay. I, I have one other procedural question, more for Dana than I think you, but Dana, you you made a comment about paying a bill uh, that, that I think Brad was looking at in the, the booklet, but we don't pay bills before the select board approves them, right? You approve them here. It's we already approved them. No, you no, haven't done it tonight. Yet. So if you have Okay, a bill the comment there, was I felt I had to pay them. Or I felt I had to pay it. So I was just procedurally I was making sure that we weren't paying bills before the select board no, actually approved bills. Okay. Good. And this was I piped that pro that was in the code that the road is not usable and this was over by the uh, hospital. Yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't about that at all. It was just procedurally. I just wanted to make sure that it was the same as it was in the last select board yeah, position. That was, was going through the board. So me. Yeah. And we have had times that sometimes the select board would like us to pull a bill for mm -hmm. some reason. And we certainly can and do we, that. We have done that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And having that discussion, we'll skip over <laughs> licenses and everybody has a chance to look at them. Um, anything else, Diane? No. Uh, JC Earl, Town Forest. Are we supposed to come over there? What's the best way to help the, the, the town folks? I guess just yell. Just yell from down here? <laughs> well, maybe, Tim, could you move with him for a moment? And Absolutely. And then come back. I sure can. That would be great. Thank you very much. I can do that. And Tom is here, too, from the, the Conservation Commission as well. So, nice. do you want to hang back here? Or you want to, what do you want to do? They have a lovely table prepared, okay? He said, attack you. <laughs> 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 All right, very good. <laughs> people want this on or not? Yeah, you. Yeah. When I'm talking, it might be a little easier to yeah. see. Yeah. You're six feet. Yeah, there you go, exactly. I'm all for it. So, um, uh, real briefly, uh, we were a little concerned on the Conservation Commission because there was a gentleman operation out of um, Northfield that. Uh, had established a business practice that we were not too excited about, which was they run a bunch of lines on town land and tap a bunch of trees. And then when someone says, uh, hey, you've tapped a bunch of trees, they say, oh, sorry, we didn't know where we were. How about we offer you a little bit of money for a lease? So I had walked some of the, where the tarsal we're talking about that I was concerned about is the one that comes up from Brookfield Road. Are people familiar with that or do I need to give the, I'm show familiar. them that? Okay, so it comes up from Brookfield Road, goes right up to the top of the ridge. Right. Yeah. So that was the one that abuts uh, the Northfield parcel, the town parcel that's in Berlin, and they had uh, they had twisted uh, Northfield's arm into letting them do a lease on that land. So I was concerned that they were going to be doing the same. So it took a while because it's way up there to get up there, but uh, I eventually got up there and was really disappointed to see that. Uh, our fears were uh, indeed true. So, um, Dan, I, did you get a chance to print out the, there was one photo of, of the area that we mapped. I gave you uh, all the photos I think I have. Okay, that one just didn't get printed out. I apologize, I didn't get a chance to print it out either. Um, Maybe I didn't. But that's okay. So, I went up and um, mapped the area and um, with a hunting app called ONX Hunt, I'm not sure if you, know, if you smile, if you, you promoted it. It's a very simple app. It's $29 a year. And it doesn't. It gets you within five or 10 feet of a, a property corner post. Um, so I find that, I mean, we'll see what this gentleman says when, when we approach him, because I, I obviously haven't yet. But uh, according to that program, he's tapped about 12 acres of uh, Berlin Town Forest. And um, so that's not insignificant. It's been tapped for at least two years, potentially three. Um, so I um, have a bunch of pictures here of the tapping. I mean, and one thing that's worth mentioning sort of right off the bat is uh, just so people are oriented, and Tom can maybe speak to this more, but um, the value of a sugar maple tree uh, for, for timber purposes is its veneer value which uh, is the first eight feet of the log. So when people you know, say, well, what's the tapping? It's just a few holes, what's the big deal? The problem is that when you take a $3,000 tree and you put even two taps in it, you now have a $100 tree for firewood. So even though it seems like a super small little thing, it actually is a fairly uh, uh, in severe uh, consequence for the value of the trees up there. Um, so there is a, a the Vermont um, passed uh, uh, what's called the Vermont Timber Theft Act. I also sent that to you, but uh, yeah. Anyways, we we can print that out or send it around. But it's very clear that it's not just taking a whole tree that is theft, but damaging a tree and the timber value of a, of a tree is is considered theft um, because of the theft of the value. Um, and uh, one 22-inch diameter tree, the rough value is two thousand dollars. So at, let's say, 40 trees per acre times, let's round down, 10 acres, potentially 400 trees. No, is that right? No, let's see. 40 times, yeah, 40 times 10 is 400 times $2,000 is potentially a huge step that went on up there. 
Well, the trees, is that $2,000 you're quoting, is that per tree or per thousand board feet? No, it's, it's uh, well, for the, the value in sugar maple is not based on board feet, it's based on the value as a, as a veneer log. So, so yeah, but they buy veneer by the board for it. It could be. So I, I'm, I'm just going off the tab, the, the, state, the state thing. They're, they're saying that a 22-inch diameter grass height tree is worth $2,000. Um, so that figure is probably way too high. But it's definitely a significant value of the, of the damage done to trees up there. There's no question. Uh, I don't think in, in my mind. And I'm not a professional uh, forester. Tom, do you have anything to say about that? Well, one thing I would add is the um, Conservation Commission has not gone up and evaluated, nor do we have the skills, what the value is up there. But there's a lot of value, a lot of theft that's occurred. Like, I talked to a forester who has about 40 years worth of experience in the Northeast Kingdom, the state, uh, the state uh, forester, and he said that the bottom eight-foot log, which is of course the most valuable log, would go, even if it's not a veneer, the, just a run-of-the-mill saw log, its value becomes pulp. So the snow, the maple is no longer any good as a saw log, and he's been selling logs to buyers for 40 years. So, so to get a good indication of what's up there and what the damage is, I think the town would have to hire a forester or somebody with some skill to do that. But Jay-Z's right, I mean, the, the value up there uh, and I should also say that the town forest is, we manage it under a forest management plan adopted by the town of the select board. And um, there's a section that we designate as old growth, not to, be, not to be cut. And I honestly, I don't know whether this particular portion is part of that. I don't think it is. but. Um, the, the point is that the town is managing that for years in a certain way, for certain values. And now somebody, pretty hard to believe that it was an accident, 12 acres, it, it, given his history. Right. Um, so we, we as the Conservation Commission, pretty, pretty outraged. So, so here's, here's just a quick look at some of the, uh, you know, just to get a sense, these are not little 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 trees that, that the guy's tapping. This, this tree is a 99 inch circumference tree. It's a 150 year old maple tree that he's tapping. Um, so I'm happy to pass these around. But um, I, I spoke to Rose Beatty, the, the town forester for Northfield, and, um, which was very insightful. She is, because I was looking to be able to give you some information on who could go and evaluate the actual value of the, the timber that was stolen up there. And she is qualified and able to do it. Um, she charges seventy dollars an hour, and she said it would probably take at least a day to get a sense of it. And just to get into there, it would sort of be worth doing one day's worth of hiring her. her and then after a day, she could re make some kind of report, and then you could evaluate whether you wanted to do more investigation on, uh, you know, the value, the actual value. So we can't say what the actual value is. I would be shocked if it was less than ten thousand dollars. Is there any kind of distinction on where the line is between Northfield and Berlin? So that is because an extra, crest, and there, yeah, there's like a, on the back side of the mountain. Is there anything like that going on? I, here's a, here's a, I, I thought this picture was quite telling. So here's the actual corner post, and if you can see, the corner post is right under a tree that they used as a as an anchor. So there's absolutely no way they missed that corner post. Yeah. You cannot tell me you missed that corner post when you did that to that tree. Zero chance. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. So, and then there is, uh, I've got a bunch of photos in here. Uh, that, so it was, it was, um, it was actually um, surveyed by Rob Townsend of, uh, of uh, North, uh, you know, for the town of Northfield. It was, the, it was that, that marker. Yep. And there are still quite a few. It's not like big no trespassing signs, but there's still quite a few. Do you know uh, what year that was done? I, I, I sent the survey to you, Dana. I don't. I didn't print it. Out. I have it on my computer. I can pull it up. Was it in our files that you sent us on Friday? 
Um, no, I think I would have sent it this morning. So I don't think it would have. But here, I mean, this heart, this photo you have to see up close. But there's an orange uh, line here. This is the Berlin town side. So there's a clear marker and a whole bunch of stuff tapped. I mean, I guarantee you this guy's going to say he didn't know where the boundary line is. So there's no question. Uh, that's what he's done before. That's what he's going to do again. Um, one other thing that's important to note from uh, Rose Baby's experience up there on the Northfield parcel, and I just think this is important for you guys to understand that not just that this guy comes in and steals you know, these trees, but the town, when they were negotiating the lease, so he did this first on the Northfield side, and then they were like, well, well, you know, you could, we could use a thousand dollars, let's let's negotiate a deal with him. So they went into the Northfield parcel in Berlin, and she evaluated it, and it was a bunch of really small maples. Like, she just didn't think it was a high value forest. So she decided to say, okay, you know, she recommended that they allow tab. So she went in and she marked the trees that had potential down the road to become saw logs. And she marked a ton of trees and she said, listen, these are the ones that I don't want you to tap. And she went back the next year and they were all tapped. So this is the person that we're dealing with. And the other thing that she said is, uh, well, two things. First, uh, he's tapping a bunch of stuff that's not the proper size. So when you tap something that's too small, it permanently damages that tree and potentially girdles it because you keep going around, and every time you tap, you damage that little area. So a small tree, you potentially girdle it over time. The third thing she said, just so I, when I first started talking to her about this, she goes, this is this guy's business plan, this guy needs to be stopped, because he just keeps doing it and keeps spreading out and uh, you know, keeps stealing, stealing timber. I did talk to the, town, the county forester, and um, you know, if you guys decide to potentially, you know, talk to this guy about leases, first of all, he said the Northfield lease is terrible. It's an absolutely terrible lease because they were over a barrel. And why were they over a barrel? Because he'd already tapped. So he's gone in. He's damaged the things. So, you know, the, the I mean, the real recourse would be to hire a forester at expense, go in there, and then hire this this town attorney. And, yeah. and see what, you know, so they're looking at, okay, I can spend a couple thousand dollars and maybe make some money, or I can collect a thousand dollars a year from this guy off land that we aren't doing much with. So they went with that. But the problem was he's already, he's already tapped them. Um, but, so, yeah, he had tapped a small amount on Turkey Hill. Um, okay. He had started on Turkey Hill and, and done a section and went over the line and the select board found out. And talked to him and went, had sent someone up to view. And anyways, a deal was negotiated for the Northfield Town Forest. After that, I don't know what happened and how. How it kept expanding. How it yeah. kept expanding. Well, it sounds like I do now. Yeah, I mean, um, sort of or potentially, stuff. but. So the, the, the county forester, he, his, from his perspective, is if you were considering to actually sign a lease, you would want to negotiate much better terms than the town of Northfield. First of all, anybody that's tapping on your property, you want them to have a bond. Because if he goes under and he leaves all that junk up there, he's not going to come out and take it down unless there's a bond. So first of all, the thing that they recommend, you know, the kind of forester would recommend is there definitely be a bond in place if he's going to do it in the lease. And there needs to be funds in there, especially for someone like this, for someone to go up and, and actually count taps. And the town of Northfield didn't, yeah. you know, didn't budget that in. Yeah. So here you go. You're making a thousand dollars a year, and you're paying someone five hundred, eight hundred dollars a year to go out and count his taps. Right. You know, I don't know. Is it, is it? How many taps do you think he has in Berlin? Do you happen to get an estimate? You know, um, I mean, it's a. I it, I did not do that, and I, I mean, it would take quite a bit of time. So uh, what I would say personally, I can. Um, and I don't know about the rest of the conservation commission. I mean, we're, we're pretty uh, upset that he's uh, gone and stolen a bunch of timber value from us. Um, personally, if you guys decided that you wanted to pursue possible damages or having this guy reprimanded and remove his stuff, I'd be happy to volunteer time to get this all sorted. But if you're just going to sign a lease for $1,000 and we're paying $100 for someone to go up there and, and this guy stole $10,000 from us, I got much better things to do with my time. So if we made a recommendation or a motion to um, have Rose Beattie spend a day 
Uh, looking at this, you would assist her. I would so assist you would, her, yeah. So yeah, you would have a good her, idea yeah. of the same thing that she's seeing in that way. Yes, exactly. She could give you. Right and she down. wanted what she wanted to do was, uh, and I'd be happy to even volunteer to do this. Is you know the the if unfortunately if Dana can circulate it, I could I have it on my computer. When I went and did the walk, it was not I didn't have the survey in hand, and the survey actually shows that following an old fence line, it's not an exact straight line. So when it was a straight line, it came out to 12.373 acres. So what Rose wanted me to do was, was actually go along and make sure that these, these orange markers are indeed the, the actual property line. So she's not up there fussing around, you know, figuring out the property line. She just wants to go in and figure out tree value. But uh, yeah, I would be, I'd be willing to assist in that. Let's hunt yeah, I should. I would like to clarify the Conservation Commission is not recommending to the select board that you start thinking about leasing these maple trees. Just no, to, yeah, just, yeah, just to make sure that. Yeah, fair. Well, you know, <laughs> our, our, our <laughs> if yeah, it's, it's, it's if, yeah. Our, I mean, our recommendation, if you were to make a recommendation, is that this guy sh should take his stuff off the town land. Right. And and I personally, I work as a real estate agent. The way I would start the negotiation is with a letter from an attorney saying, hey, you've done $25,000 worth of damage to our trees. Uh, you know, get your, you know let, let's have a conversation here. That's how I would start the conversation from a position of, of power rather than, hey, sorry, uh, noticed you uh, tapped some trees on our property. <laughs> what, when was the last time that we had a select cut done in Berlin in the town forest? In that town forest, I think it was maybe... Three years ago, four years ago, wasn't too long ago. Yeah. Pretty much, okay. too long ago. Yeah. yeah. So and just, I mean, so what? Well, we didn't cut that out. The, we didn't cut the other it. thing you want to remember, if you're going for damages, is I believe Vermont timber law or state is triple damages. So if the actual damage is of ten thousand dollars, it's a thirty thousand dollar bill. That, that is, is that is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, our recommendation would be at the very least to assess what's gone up there. And, and Rose is a professional. She, I mean, what she already talked to me about is, yeah, this, uh, you know, beautiful big maple that might be a great saw log down low is worth less up there because it's a lot of work to get it out. But that's what she calculates into all her, her yeah. calculations. I don't, I don't know Rose. What is her, what are her credentials or what is her background? Uh, she's a state, she's a forester. A state forester? A private, for a private forester. Okay. I talked to uh, the, the state forester, the, the county forester. Is that Dan Singleton? Dan Singleton, exactly. And Dan, even though he's technically part of his job is managing the town, helping us manage the town forest, he's like, JC, I just don't have time to go up there. You're going to have to get, you're going to have to hire a forester. I mean, she's just the one forester I actually happen to talk to. You know, I, 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 my understanding is any, I mean, they do charge, at least she charges from the moment she leaves her house until the moment she drives back in her driveway and she lives in Northfield. So that's that's an advantage to her. <laughs> the other recommendation, a little tongue in cheek, was there was a crime committed, theft occurred, let's send Chief Wolf up. <laughs> I mean, it's a, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so. Well, I, I certainly think it warrants having someone at least go up and look to see what the damage is and see see what's been done so we can make a better judgment on not that I disbelieve anything that you sure, said, just no, just to have a forester like Rose go up and, and take a look. And if JC is willing to go up uh, with her as a member of the conservation committee, I, I think it's money well spent. Mm -hmm. so about $700 to have Rose go up there and do a cruise? She's $70 an hour, and she said it was for one day's worth of stuff, so 70 times in, I don't know, 10 hour day, yeah, somewhere in there. Somewhere in the center of it. I'm never anxious to, to recommend spending money out of the conservation fund. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, we did log it, and the money went into the conservation fund, so I think it would be an appropriate source. Like they must have to have an insurance policy too. For, I don't know if that would cover anything, but we should try to get a copy of that from Northfield if we could. Yep. Daniel, were you already working on getting a copy of the contract of the Northfield? I did get a copy. You did. Okay. It's in the back there. Okay. So, Nathan, have we ever solved the mystery of, of uh, 
Who was asking permission? Um, I know who was asking permission. Yes. Yeah, but we've never figured out if that was the same person. But this contract is for someone, someone else's. <coughs> yeah. The only other thing that I'll, I'll mention, just from being part of the the Northfield, uh, you know, peripherally, the the scuffle that happened there is that there was a lot. There were, there were a lot of upset people because it a they sort of someone sort of stole and then they, you know, it's like someone what, you come home from dinner and someone's walking out of your house with your TV. And then says, can I rent this TV from you? <laughs> and they brokered a deal. But the second part was, if you are going to allow tap tapping on town land, it feels like it should be an open bid to the public. It shouldn't be just handed over to a thief, in my opinion. But you know what I mean? So this, this other party that's, that's expressed interest, again, I'm not advocating leasing the land, but should you decide to go down that road, I think a much more fair process would be to, to accept... Uh, you know, open it up to offers and bids. When I called Northfield to ask for the lease, and I thought it was one name that I gave them, and they said, we don't have a lease with that person, we have it with these people. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if there's a business relationship that I don't know about, mm -hmm. or something, but the name, the person that's talking to me, or has talked to me about it, is not the person on the lease. <coughs> So you're welcome, you're welcome to look through these photos. There's any questions. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. Uh, you know, there's photos in here. It is a, a rich. Oh, yeah. Make a motion that we uh, expend up to seven hundred dollars out of the conservation fund to have uh, Rose Beatty further investigate the, the twelve acres of uh, tap trees in Berlin Town Forest. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, now it's open for discussion. <laughs> um, would any members of the select board have any problems with the uh, conservation committee taking lead on this? No, I think they should. I, I mean, they are the ones that are responsible for the forest land. Mm -hmm. But uh, any money has to go through Dana. Of course. Yep. Uh, any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I abstain. Rose Bee is my forester. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very for much. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks for hearing it out. If anybody wants to, if you want to pass these photos around. Uh, JC, was it today you sent me the survey? I don't recall seeing it. I did send it today, but I can, uh, if, if it'd be helpful for people, I'm happy to resend it. Uh, send it now, make yeah, sure yeah. I have it. Yeah. I have it right on my computer. If you want to pull up the day, and it's a, the motion's passed. It's, you're moving on. So yeah. okay. if, if anybody's particularly interested, we can get you more information. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. it. Keep us Thank updated. You. Are you happy with Rose as a, as a horse? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I haven't worked with her in the past. I just know that she does it for the town. Kind of um, no, I. Some our neighbors were logging their land. We have 52 acres that's kind of separate from everything else. And we usually take and have it logged when they log theirs. And mm -hmm. I just, I, Rose and I went up, did a cruise through it, and we decided it wasn't worth the. Wasn't worth the effort. Yeah. No. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You also. Okay, Tim Bigham, concerns regarding use of town property by private entity. Hello. Hi. Hey, I'm Tim Bingham, and I, uh, I sent you guys a letter, I guess, back in March, and I know that, uh, uh, so my home is right here, 13 Shed Road, on the corner of Shed and Crosstown. Which one, is, what color is it? Just, I'm new to town, so. You're new? It's, yeah, somewhat. Oh, yeah, right there. You'll pass it when you leave here. On the only right. house on the right. Okay. Right at the corner. And um, so I'm here today to ask you guys to consider a couple of policy changes. And the first one has, the whole thing has to do with peaceful enjoyment of my property. And the first one I wanted you to consider has to do with the transport trucks that bring in our 10,000 plus tons of sand and gravel every year that we use, you know, highway department needs. 
and uh, the manner in which that's brought in. And the second thing has to do with letting people use our town property. So when I bought the property five years ago, I knew that everything goes on here with the town clerk, with the police department, with the highway. You guys have meetings, so all this traffic's coming and going all day long. Totally understand. What I have trouble with is every summer there's some contractor that's using our property, ours being the town, whether it's the painting crew or the tree crew or the... And this year it's Winterset who's doing work for the state of Vermont. They add a lot of traffic and trucks and they're parking some trucks out here. The east side of my house is, 11, is a, it's 10 or 11 feet, I think it's from the edge of Shed Road. When, when I sit at my office desk, it's so close I can read the little numbers on the truck tires, you know. When the transport trucks come through, especially the ones that are 22 <coughs> wheels, and I think they're permitted to 97,500 pounds, they shake my house. They shake my house. My house vibrates. And especially when they run their engine brakes and they dog the gears. I can sit there at my desk and it shakes. If that house was built in 1845, it was probably here long before some of these others. Tom's house is pretty old, I imagine. But, <clears throat> so I have real trouble with a private, for-profit company using our land for free. First, my choice is that they don't belong here. They belong in the industrial park, which is right up the street. And I, I feel like the industrial park has encroached. And yes, they're doing work for the city or the, the state. That's fine. They got six million bucks to fix those bridges. And I would almost guarantee you there's a line item in their budget to rent property for their on-site trailers, trucks. And I think they have a little yard up in the industrial park already right up by the airport on Comstock. So, <clears throat> you know, the transport trucks that bring in our sand and gravel, uh, there's about 400 that bring it in, and every truck that comes in, they gotta go right back out, right past my house, right past my office. Um, that's understandable. It's a lot of traffic. And it happens usually over a three to six week period, usually in August, early September. And during that time, I can't, be outside cleaning my cars or doing it's a dust storm. So not only do we have noise and dust, extra traffic, it shakes my house. And I'm just going to ask you guys to consider it, whatever you, but why do we have private for private companies using our property for free in the Berlin historic residential neighborhood? Uh, the Farrells couldn't be here tonight, they're out of town, but they too have concerns and maybe I'll come back with them the next meeting. The Farrells live right here on the left. They have three little boys, very active family, you know, playing ball, playing bike, you know, balls rolling in the road, and we just don't need all this extra traffic on this tiny little residential street. Um, so if you've got any questions, I have to be. It's, it's just been bothering me for five years, and, and, and I, this year, I thought, oh, we're not going to have it. Finally, we're not going to have it. Then in February, they put the trailers. That's why in March, I wrote to Dana and wrote to you guys. Um, and then Dana said, they're here. I got okay with it for them being here this summer. I go on the AOT website, it's a three year project. So this is gonna go on for not only this year. So my ask would be not for them to leave this summer, not the trailers. I'm not crazy about their big dump trucks out here and their trailers, which I see some of them are now parked up on the interstate. So my ask would be that we let them stay the rest of the summer, but ask them at the end of this construction season, those trailers are out of here next year, we don't allow these private companies to use our land. And frankly, they owe you rent. They owe us rent. They have a line item, I almost guarantee it, to pay rent, and they should be paying us rent retroactively to February or March when they came in. Thank you. Well, I'd like to add a little moral support to my neighbor. <laughs> This is not this is not a new issue. This issue has been going on for a long time. And when when we were reviewing the permit for the travel center, one of the options that we worked very hard on, um, well, two ways. One is the town permitting, but also 
the neighborhood, if anybody remembers, uh, uh, we weren't satisfied with the town permit. We wanted that berm and the fence and the trees to protect the historic neighborhood. And so the neighborhood got together and we actually initiated legal action and we negotiated the berm, the fence, the trees to protect the neighborhood. And I got to tell you, the travel center did a wonderful job. It was great. And the neighborhood loves it. We even have a slide in here now. But um, it had been an issue. Part of that discussion was we really should have an access from, you know, where the trucks park now next to the travel center, there should be an access to the town garage Direct. directly from that direction. And it was doable, but um, of course the travel center doesn't want trucks going through their business. So that was, that was an understandable issue, but maybe it could be revisited with the travel center now that they've had some experience. Maybe there's still a way of getting all of the you know, the heavy traffic um, off in this road and go, go directly, instead of the trucks coming all the way through the historic neighborhood, go directly into the town center. Maybe there's a, a better option there. I don't know, but it definitely was not, uh, it was not received, the suggestion wasn't received really enthusiastically last time, so. But it might be worth asking again. How many trucks are usually there? I didn't look when I drove Park there. here? You park here at the, the tender on the town land. Right here? Usually. Well, they've had five out here with a trailer. You know, these are 10-wheel dump trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, they've parked them on this side of the fence and uh, where we used to put the sand for the community to go. Um, some of those are now up on the interstate, I noticed today, where they're right in the construction zone. So. I don't know if they're going to come back and live here ever again, but they were here for a number of weeks. Now, the winter set, they have these gray pickup trucks, or, you know, six-wheel trucks, four-wheel trucks. For some reason, they're back and forth constantly, all day long, into these construction trailers. It's, you know, we already got enough traffic back in here. Do we need more? And for free? In a residential neighborhood? Historic residential neighborhood. You know, my house is on the registry, national registry, yours probably is, I don't know, but I, why do we have them here? Why are they here? Does anyone on the board or anyone in the audience know why they don't just park over in the uh, commuter lot over near Maplewoods? Like they have that lower lot where all the big trucks park. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, the one that yeah, the lower of Comfort Inn. Yeah. So every truck that's here and every person, like when they park the trucks here, of course, yeah. then you have the, the workers come in in their personal vehicle, park it, they take the trucks up, and then they go back and forth in, a number of times. So. <clears throat> well, we'll certainly take a look into the, what, uh, the traffic as far as winter sets going back and forth to the trailers. I mean, if they can cut their trips down. But we'll have taken see what winter set we had what the agreement was. Well, we probably should come up with a policy. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I'm thinking would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know as far as the traffic getting aggregate into the town. There's nothing to know. How we lost. But, um, exact traffic going play hockey though. Those, uh, we can't have that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you guys would consider, you know, like it, perhaps let them stay this year, ask them not to park the big trucks, maybe they'll pay you some rent, I think they should, and, you know, make a new policy perhaps that in the future we take a serious look at who we allow to use our town property for free and increase traffic through this historic neighborhood. So thank you for your time. Thank you very thank you. much for bringing your thoughts and concerns forward. Oh, thank you. See you later, Tom. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Thanks for your service, folks. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, we did improve Cartridge Farm. We did some, uh, I think it was gravel there, right? Or is it paving? Paving. Paving. Yeah. Yeah. Paving. And on, did some paving on Industrial Lane. And then uh, we did resurface uh, some of Fisher Road. Uh, we did some resurfacing in our garage. And then um, for Dubois Construction, we paid at 5831 for that main break, okay? Which all of that is right out of the budget. Okay, we did not get any kind of compensation for that, just to make you aware. So our, um, our revenues are up a little bit, and part of that for this year, excluding you know, the grants we had from last year, is we did borrow $150,000 for a highway truck that was not in our budget for FY20 that we ended up buying in July of this past year, July 19, 2019. Okay. So otherwise, then, the others are very comparable to what we did have in FY19. And as far as the expenses, uh, just real quickly, the, like, there's the, there is going to be some overages in payroll. Most of that has to do with the police department. Okay, that's going to be a little higher than I had anticipated. We did have a couple guys that were in the um, academy. academy. Okay, and so that was something I had not anticipated when we were doing the FY20 budget. So that wasn't in there. Uh, and plus, because we've had people that have come and gone, you know, as it so often happens, we've had more uh, part-time people working, and we've had more overtime, okay, because obviously they have to fill, you know, fill those hours. Okay, and then um, just real quickly, um, on workers' comp, actually, workers' comp was much better for us this past year. Um, the rate for the police department yeah, went from $9 per hundred down to $8.77, which was, you know, for us very good, and that's the state rate, okay? That's not had nothing to do with our deviation and also on the highway department, it went down substantially. So that is really good for us. So if you do look at the insurances for the workers' comp, those are lower than we anticipated. But also, with the insurances that we get from the least cities and towns, that's on calendar year basis, obviously. We're in fiscal year, so we're always like six months off on that. It's never ever going to be exactly the amount that I put in there. But this year's a little bit lower in, in most of the cases. Okay. Liability insurance is going down. No, no, that didn't go down. It didn't go up that much either, but it did not go down. The liability insurance part of it is that we had to replace that excavator and uh, the trailer, so you know, we ended up having more because it's more equipment. Whenever we get newer equipment, obviously the insurance goes up. So if you if you have any questions on it, I'll you know, we'll go over it with you. But I was just trying to point out some of the you know, some of the areas that we spent a little bit more on, but everything is really comparable to FY19. You know, we spent more for salt in FY19 than we not. We spent like 113000 for salt, and this year we spent like eighty nine, which is still not great. But, um, you know, we didn't spend as much as we had the previous year. Different winter, too. Yeah, very much different winter, yeah. But we still spent enough. Same contract price for the salt? Yeah. yeah. 
couple of seconds. And I'm getting those numbers ready. At some point, I'll show you what we've done the last three years where our consumption has been and how much the you know, prices have increased or spacing. The winter before last, we had a lot of ice. Oh, boy, I guess yeah. so. And what were the changes with the zoning and the town clerk? Uh, the town clerk, there? well, the town clerk, when, um, that went up a little bit as far as the advertising went. In the past, when we advertised for the um, for the boats and stuff like that, uh, the, the school would share that with us. And oh. now we're by ourselves. Okay. So we have to do, we still have to have, to have the same rate. Mm -hmm. And it's just us paying for it instead of the school, you know, pitching in half and half. So that is higher. And as far as the town clerk, we got a reimbursement. Uh, in FY20 that belonged to FY19 that had to do with all of the extra boats that we did because we had to merge the schools. Mm -hmm. And so finally, uh, the town clerk, she went after it. She said, well, you have to pay us back. And they didn't pay us back until FY20. So, you know, it was, the savings is reflected in FY20. Mm -hmm. And zoning, I don't know, There's any, is there anything greater in that? Um, I think the telephone expense is up slightly, but we've had to, um, I think we either repaired or replaced Tom's phone this past year. Well, is that, which one are we in? The zoning. You're asking about zoning. Zoning. Yeah. I was wondering on the zoning. What was higher on there was the telephone. Telephone. I yeah. think it's just the telephone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do believe we had to replace Tom's phone or they repaired or something. Probably. Yeah. Who's releasing this phone system up, or is it already coming well? It's coming well. Yeah, so we own the phones. So right now we're just paying for it. Yeah, we're not servicing them anymore. Yeah. Are these IP phones? Yes. They are. Okay. Yes. How old are the phones? 2014. Yeah, like six or seven. Else on the budget review? Not really, unless you get questions, you can email them to me. I'm happy to look through the stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want to quickly give you an overview and not bore you to death. In in the warrants um, or in the in the payments, we had a two thousand dollar payment to a solar company. Yes. Did you tell Dana me? can explain that. Sandstone okay. Solar. I never understand the terminology. Um, okay. It's the electric bill. Um, a few years ago, the select board voted to. Um, go with a solar company on a, I think it's a PPW power. Um, I'd have to look that up. To Do we have solar panels no, here? No. So we're drawing off a solar grid, is that? Yes. Yeah. Um, theoretically. Um, how yeah. many How many buildings are we talking about? That's this building and the highway garage and the water pump for the water division and the sewer main pump on very Montpelier Road is, is what's under that program. Yeah, so okay. the general fund pays for their portion, the sewer pays for theirs, and the water pays right. for theirs. So there's three different accounts in there. Right. We so do get another bill from Green Mountain Power for the transmission costs. So the $2,000 payment to them is coming out of the general fund cost? Part is of it is. And yeah. part Just of part of it. Sewer I think it's like six. Okay, so that's a, that's so a whole that's payment. Exactly Everything. Yeah, that's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All three together. Okay. What's and if you don't remember, that's fine. What's the general fund portion of that for the buildings? Do you know? I'm just curious. It's on the bill, $648, I think it is. Okay. Great. Any other questions for Diane on the budget review? Nice job, Diane. Thank you. If you have any questions, email me. I'm happy to look it up. Okay. End of year fiscal reserves. This gives us a nice segue into the end yes. of the year. This is the yearly um, time of year that we ask you to hold over funds and to uh, allow us to transfer funds to and from the reserve funds. Uh, this year we have five funds that we'd like, we're asking for you to consider. Uh, in the capital budget we have $15,000 which was to be for a new server that we were going to bid this spring, which we have not because of COVID. Um, but we are definitely going to need a new service, so we'd like you to reserve that $15,000.
into the next year. We have 41,900 left in the bridge maintenance account. Um, we are, would like to go forward on Richardson Road and we would like to reserve that fund to go toward the Richardson Road culvert. What, what about Lover's Lane? Um, or Lover's Lane into that, into that fund. I mean, we have, the reserve fund only has 41.9, so, you know. We can spend that. We have two, we can surely spend it plus a lot. Um, the Recreation Board, um, we, the general fund paid Recreation Board bills of $903. Uh, we would like to withdraw that from their reserve account to pay the general fund back. Uh, police services, the police department community fund, which is um, monies that are donated to the police department for police activities. Um, the police have used it for things like the kids at Halloween and buy the bags and, and that type of thing. There is a net of $1,530.50. We would like to transfer that from the general fund to the reserve for the police fund. Um, the building reserve fund and administration, we would like to withdraw $7,025.75 to reimburse the general fund for um, to help us toward the payment of the police door replacement project that we have. These are done, the reserves, we only do this accounting once a year at the end right. of the year. Right, and we do it at the end of the year because we have to have it approved before we go into the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So we're asking for your consideration on those. Your motion? Would you like any clarification? Does anybody? We can do that after we get the motion. They just have some questions. A motion so we can go into discussion? Yeah. So move to approve the uh, proposed uh, fiscal year 20 budget reserve. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? There you go, John. Can you speak <laughs> a little bit louder, please? So, the, Dana, when you say you have to re replace a server, what does the server do? The server operates the accounting system for the town. Um, okay. And has all the computers um, connected to it. It stores all our documents on the server. Um, and then they are backed up to the cloud at the end of the day. But it's the it's the computer, if you will, and, and that lives here. It does, yeah. right? And what do we usually have in maintenance charges, approximately, on, um, on that well, server a year? This is an interesting. Uh, we have we're always over on that. It's in the uh, the software support budget, whereas we budgeted six thousand dollars to date. We spent eleven thousand. Yeah. Um, 759. Some of that is server related and, and some of it is not. Yeah. So I, I have no problem doing something different because I think we need to, but I'm not sure putting another server here is the right thing to do. Actually, I know it's not. Um, I think that would be great if we had someone who, like you, that knows um, because this server, um, and I'm telling you things I do not know, uh, it's a Scalix server. And we've had a lot of, there's a lot of issues with it. We cannot send large emails through it. Right. Um, and it's getting, it's, I think that server's probably almost seven years old, maybe yeah. six seven, or 2014. seven. Yeah, there's, okay. there's no need for a lot of this stuff anymore. Yeah. I think I, I can help you do the yeah. cost comparison to something else. But it just even looking at our uh, technology bill just in this warrant um, and the charges for, you know, the, the 15 or 30 minutes at a time and what they were for mm -hmm. um, leads me to believe we have we have issues that we shouldn't be having it with modern technology and it's not the hardware right it's the way I think that well we a can, lot of it is yeah. first of all we're not computer experts I understand and so we're at the mercy of the yeah. of the company uh, doing it for us and but you know I'm sure the technology has changed since it was it was put in 
Yeah. Um, a good so time to take we would certainly, absolutely. I think it would be an absolute great time. And I don't know if 15,000 is anywhere too high, too low. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously we need to do something that protects mm -hmm. our records. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We'll do some shaving. So how can we how can we do that? Can I work with you? Absolutely. On, yep. uh, coming up with yep. something. Yeah, we can get an estimate. Uh, I'm assuming when it comes to your computers, you buy the office license and everything right on them, and yeah. your yes. email's configured on your computer, yes. and how do you check your emails from home? Or you don't? I don't do emails from home. I don't you ever. Can't get to it, or you just no, don't? No, you can. You don't. can go on the, you can go on the, 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 and that's another thing, and again, I'm not sure if I understand this. Our computers have Outlook, however, we have to use a software program called Zimbra. I saw that. Because I've never heard it, of it. the Zimbra is the only thing that will talk to this, this yeah. cranky server. <laughs> I'm going to help with this if you, you know, don't mind. And we're, we're, I would love it. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I think, I think let's, let's leave that amount in there to, to be certain that we have enough. But I'm, I'm fairly confident between that line item and the maintenance line item, we'll, we'll have more than enough money to meet our needs. Yeah. But we can put another color in. I was going to say Richardson Road and Lovers Lane. Right. Thank and, you. The, and the other question I had, um, it was around the fifteen hundred dollars to the police fund. Do they have a special fund that's managed um, just just for them? Like uh, the last select board I was part of, we had all kinds of special funds, probably too many, right? It, it is, Where they were yeah. super restricted to yes. only go towards certain types of things. Absolutely, and this is what they call the PD fund. Okay, okay. and uh, part of that credit is we receive twenty five hundred dollars from Walmart. You know, saying you know, spend it on you know whatever you really need. Right. And sometimes they spend it on supplies. They might like I think they just bought um, a radio. You probably saw it in the you know in the bills they had a radio. Mm -hmm. So that came out of there. But in that particular fund right now, before we make this change, we got twelve thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars in that fund. If we were to add the fifteen thirty, we have fourteen thousand dollars. Now, it is cheap wolf at this point that does give me the invoices. Um, I don't know if you want to make any changes to that. He's the one that usually determines what he's going to spend on. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, for me, I don't, need, I don't need to manage at that level. I'm just kind of curious on, like, why we, why we have to do that transfer. Why wouldn't we just put that money from Walmart right into that account and give Chief Wolf some discretion um, to apply logic to what he spends when we would sign off on the warrant still, but we wouldn't have to do these transfers back and forth. Yeah, and I guess it's because he doesn't spend the whole amount. If he spent the whole amount got it down to zero or less, then we wouldn't be transferring anything, but he never seems to. We seem to be okay. building all the time, or we deplete more of it. But like I say, we still, right now, we do have quite a lot of money on there. And okay. he's not and part of this is money. how the accounting is done. Well, and or just to save it, because mm -hmm. if I... I don't. If we don't reserve it, then it right. just gets eaten. During the year, the money back. goes yeah. into the general fund, and then once a year, it gets transferred to the reserve. So here okay. we are. And then the police door um, situation, what, what's that about? We had to replace both entrance doors on the police station and on the um, employee's door, on the outside, the outside doors. And it was over $7,000? $7, yeah. I believe like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that went through the approval process here as well. Yeah, we just want to start cleaning out some of these reserves so that we just have a few reserves, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have 30 different reserves. Which is why the maintenance, the building maintenance, is in the red 4,200. So if we do, we'll now have a plus of 3,000. Right. That, 7, and then the 41.9 to the the bridge fund, whichever bucket you know the, mm -hmm. we want to put it in, how much money is in that account now? Right now we have fifty-four thousand. If we add the forty-one, we'll have ninety-six thousand. Right. And how much is the Richardson Road project? I'm hoping that we have spent quite a bit already on the Richardson Road project, so I'm hoping that we are not going to exceed another sixty thousand dollars on that. So we potentially have enough money in the that fund. To do Richardson Road. Almost. Not quite, but almost. Well, if we move this money, we would. 
Is it 54 with the 41 or, or yeah. not? No, 54 right. is before. Oh, okay, then we would. Yeah. Yeah. So we get not, if they move that, we'll have 96 now. Oh, great. And how much is the Lover's Lane Bridge estimate? Well, I haven't put that out to bid. Okay. Um, is that just new decking? It's new decking. New decking. But I'm, and so that should be fair. A little later, I was going to talk to you about that because now that things are opening up, I'd like to do that. I think there is a little steel work to do underneath the old deck. Is that there's some rust issues? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I'm just curious. I, I didn't know if this was the start of it and it was a $250,000 project and, you know, we were well five we, years out or eight years have, out. Or, I mean, you know, Richardson Road, out. we've been paying. Two no, years, no. the last two, two years, years, we've had really engineering work done. We had the same engineer that did the Mirror Lake job. Right. Um, but what I've heard from you is that there's only one way on and off that road. On Richardson Road, that's right. Right, so yeah. if that culvert fails, then it's, we're in big trouble. It's a big problem, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this, on FY20, for the Richardson Road, we spent $2,282 yeah. on the culvert. Yeah, and, and if you look before, you're going to find... We had uh, probably uh, similar to that amount. So I don't think we spent that much on Richardson Road yet. Okay. Does the state have Bailey Bridges? I don't know if they do anymore. Have what? Bailey Bridges. What are Bailey so, Bridges? Oh, those are those, uh, you pin them together and you mm -hmm. put them up across the stand. Oh, like temp temporary, temporary Bridge. Yeah, they still use those in places. I was just thinking, if worse comes to worse, we'd always just lay that on the roadway mm -hmm. and put a, you know, feather it up on both sides. Mm -hmm. So, I've, I've seen Bailey Bridges in place for years. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, if that's the case, at least we have uh, some. I just think it's there. important we get Bridges and Road yeah. done. So when I leave here at the end of the day, that, I can, that will be my legacy, Richardson Road, Culver. I think that's all the questions I have. No other questions? You want the motion to move the money for in the fiscal year reserves? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Tapping town forest agreements from the town of Rockville? I guess we've, we've kind of addressed that already. I had gotten the um, the town of Northfield sent me the agreement they have with the person. Yeah, I missed it somehow. You don't have it, John? I will get it to you. I didn't have any attachments other than the agenda. Of the PDF. No, I didn't see it. So I was looking for stuff. Thank you. I didn't send you the attachment. All I had was the cover page for the agenda, so I was happy to see this one right here. Oh. You know, if that yes, happens, sir. call me. Please. <laughs> I don't know whether it was me or, or what, but please call me if that happens. Could have been me too. Because I'm just thinking everything is wonderful. So, it looks like previous conversation, they have to have some sort of insurance policy, so I, if they are over the town line, it'd be nice to... I can ask them for the insurance policy. Yeah. I'll do it. <coughs> so that's been covered? I, I think so. Okay. Uh, approval of select board minutes for June 1st, 2020. And June 3rd, 2020, and June 8th, 2020. I move approval of the select board minutes for June 1st, June 3rd, and June 8th. I second that motion. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, town administrator's report, David. Sure. Okay. Richardson Road culvert we've discussed. <laughs> Lover's Lane Bridge we've discussed. Um, now that we can get people in the building, um, 
I'm going to put out a bid for the repair of the wall in the clerk's office. Um, we are expecting insurance funds in the amount of 21000 on that. The previous estimate we had was 29000 So um, the insurance company would like us to put it out the bid, so I will do so. Um, the town center designation project, the planning commission had a meeting last week and there are several changes to that project that the consultant has pointed out. And they have asked if the board will meet with them in a meeting that would just address these changes on the um, town center designation. And so I'm thinking maybe we could meet on a Wednesday and maybe we could meet at the Grange to have some more space um, to do that. And maybe the first week in July, maybe that's not a good week, the third week in July? Probably. First week in July. Is pretty You're gone. July is Friday. Yeah. When's the fourth? The fourth is Saturday. Yeah, it's on a Saturday. And our next meeting is the sixth. So that's dangerous. Maybe we can maybe we can do it on the, uh, what would that be, the 20th? Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, they've asked me not to do it on, on a regular select board meeting. They, they want it to time. be apart from that they, to get them they some time. time. So maybe the 22nd of July? Well, if you were talking Wednesday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's important because um, I've looked at the, the changes and I'm not that jiggy with it myself. Yeah, <laughs> um, So you'd say the 22nd. So I'll I'll set that up with them. Is that all right with both of you? Yeah. Good to meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tim had gotten a quote from Pike some time ago um, for paper, and he has since gotten. And I told him today, I think this should be put out for bid, for paving, um, because Pike is very anxious for him to sign this contract. Um, so, unless you have an objection, I'm going to No objection for me. For bid. Um, is this on, what's this? We're talking for? about Granger Road, um, that needs to be, that needs to be repaved, and depending on what the bid for Granger Road, some of Junction Road needs to be done as well. I'm talking the paid section, obviously. Yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it from the yeah. railroad tracks on, or? Yeah, yeah, right about there, yeah. 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 Uh, the junction, or the railroad tracks that go across by the sewer plant? Mm, no, it's, no. The, it's on junction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. So I have a question. Is the, the building now open? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was a little confused with emails that were going back and forth. That, <laughs> that I, well, I didn't I cop mean, anyone on. I, just, I had just asked some questions, too. You know, we have, um, we now have the window here in the lobby um, that, is, that is open so people can come into the lobby. We do have a sign asking people to just limit it to one person or one family at a time. Um, Right along, actually, Diane, Tom, and I have been basically open anyway, because whatever people have needed, we have gotten for them. Um, open as we used to know it is not going to happen for a while. Um, I don't understand. So tell me how it used to be, and then tell me why it can't be that way now. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I just want to... Well, understand because it seems like I a think, pretty low I think traffic what type of area. It is a low traffic. However, we would have to monitor how many people are in the building. Um, and that would be fine, although I can't monitor the clerk's office and going where the treasurer's office is for people going through the clerk's office to get to the treasurer's office is problematic. Um, You're basing that number off from the recent guidance or what what level of guidance i'm trying to base it on the most recent guidance okay um, so the staff has um 
is happy that we're open again as such. Um, we are keeping track of our adjoining neighbors and that's how they're doing it um, in the same way that we are. I don't have an objection to being open as far as the old way. I can't, and again, you know I can't talk to the clerk's office um, and how that would work. I think that Rosemary feels better that she's got the window, that she can help people through the window, and she has started uh, making appointments for people who need research. If the board tells me something different, of course I would do that. No, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, open means different things to different people, right? So is it, it's just the window that's really open. It's not the, it's not open when I, you pick me up on, on what it used to be. When it used to be open, the people could walk into the building and they could go to the clerk's office or they could come down here and, and get what they needed. Now it's open in the sense they come into the lobby if they need to see Tom, Tom would come out and get them. And same for me. Right. So if we had, so just to save you from having to count, <laughs> right, and keep track of the guidance, if we just had a sign-in sheet, sign in and sign out, that would allow you to know if someone was at the window how many people were in the building. Um, sign in at the window? Yeah. yeah, or at the door, just to... Is that what you'd like us to do? I don't know. Um, I'm, just, know. I'm just talking out loud to this person to try to try to solve the, the issues Is, that that appear to be occurring still. Well, well, is the issue that us, or is it the clerk's office? I think, I think it's access to the vault. It's I think so. Of it's access to the vault, and just you know, the perception, you know, of you know, well, if everyone else is doing it this way in the building, why would I do it any differently, right? So, mm -hmm. trying to provide some kind of standard for, or some kind of process, or policy for how we allow people in and okay you sign your name and there's no one else in the building you wear your mask you follow these precautions you go right to the bathroom you wash your hands you do your business you sign out on your way out I, I don't know I'm, I'm just trying well, to I'm just, I, I think I'd have to you know before I gave any suggestions I've given quite difference to Rosemary in trying to work through this and it has not been an easy um, and I think she's um, really done a good job as far as protecting her office, and I admire that. Um, and could we send people here, but we can't send them through there to get the guy in. We'd have to send them around. So it's, it's just, I'm, I'm open for suggestions, but it's well, not. Out, lay out of the building. You know. I know. I know, but are we going to keep the building? Closed or partially open in the way that it is now until there's a vaccine. Like that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about essentially. You know, I mean, and all I know is that I have no um, example to look at because the other towns aren't doing it either. Which other towns? Uh, Northfield, Barry City, Barry Town, and mm -hmm. Montpelier. They're not letting people in? No. Northfield is by appointment, or else they're bringing, like we've been doing, you know, yeah. somebody needs something, they'll bring it out. I mean, I think you could. And I'd love to be open, too. I mean, it'd be a lot easier for me. Like, if you can die, I mean, for, to get to the treasurer, you can, I mean, we don't have any signage out there. It'd be pretty easy to keep people out of the building and over on that. We can send them around to her door, I mean, and, we, some sign and we did that special. when, uh, taxes were due. I mean, she basically she was open, taking people at the door to pay right. taxes, and she was one of the few towns that was taking cash. For that. Yeah. So, like, so you're, you're saying you'd like to see an operating procedure in place for that? Yes, yeah, so I think that's consistent across all the all the divisions or departments within within the town. Just to say, you know, okay, if we if we call and make an appointment, we will be let in, or you know, the doors open, you have to sign in and, you know, no more than two people, you know, in the building at a time or, you know, public. Mm -hmm. It could be published on our website and everything. Yeah, very clear. I'm just thinking, like, yeah. it could be clear, you know, if, if, you know, John, Justin, and Dana have all signed in and none of us have signed out, then there's three people in here doing business and we won't allow anymore until. I'm just trying to 
figure out a way to. So is that different from what we're doing now? Well, as far as you know, because we, I assume the front, the middle, the inside door would be locked still. Someone would have to wait on them to have them sign out, sign in, and let them in. Unless if there was instruction on how. You know, and uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, but they wouldn't just walk into the building on their own. Is, is that, am I understanding you correctly? I mean, yeah, I don't. So the whole trouble is, is no matter what, you got to take and follow the dictates of the state. But I think there's enough flexibility there at this point. I mean, there there's small gatherings of up to 25 people. I mean, I will agree, we don't have that, you know, many at once, but we have a very peculiar setup. I understand. And, I'm just, you know, I know. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. I've struggled with this. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, realistically, somebody comes into the cubicle mm -hmm. lobby. Lobby. Okay. The lobby. Comes into the lobby there. First person they're going to talk to is Corinne or Rosemary. Rosemary. Yeah. And the best we can do is pretty much find out where they want to go, and then have whoever they're you supposed know. to meet with. What they would do now, if it was someone for Tom, Rosemary would call Tom and say, can you come down, there's someone here to see him. And he would come down and probably let them in, yeah. help them so, with what they needed. What we're, what we're doing now is pretty much about as efficient as we're ever going to get in this building. You know, I'm... How much is an intercom system at the door? Well, we do need something there. Mm -hmm. um, and I have um, talked to Bob Felt, and he suggested we put another phone out there. And so I've asked them to put a drop um, there, and I haven't gotten it yet. But so then the person just would call where so, they see. So, you know, if they were to come in and Rosemary wasn't there, for example, um, we do have a little bell there now, but we need some way to have people let us know they're there. Yeah. Um, and we certainly, any of us, could go down and help them. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, what, what would, how would you, how would you go about this if the select board said the doors shall be unlocked from 8 a.m. to 4:30 or whatever the time is, Monday through Friday? Well, I think that the staff would have to decide if it was worth it to them to stay here. Yeah. Um, frankly. Like with anything. You know, um, and if that were the case, then we'd have to do that if we wanted to stay here. No, but what what I'm saying not not the not the decision on whether to continue working for the town, but I mean how, that flip. I, I you know I understand. Well, yeah. Um, how would you go about building your policy or your procedure to you know uh, mitigate as many concerns as you could, knowing that okay, we all need to work, so no one's quitting, right? Let's let's take let's start there and just pretend that that's the the baseline. What can we do in order to? Well, you know, I think that I, I thought we were there. To sit down with the staff. The staff has been extremely helpful in getting this arrangement. We've all worked together, Rosemary included, um, in getting what we thought was a good way to get ourselves not normal because that's not happening right away, but as normal as possible. Um, I, how difficult is it? I mean, the big thing is records at this point, right? To access to it. Those are the only things that I've heard I've about. Heard of. I, I think that's the only thing you've gotten because we've taken right. care of everything I mean, else. You've done, you've done a great job with that, honestly. Yeah. But I would, I think, I agree that we should have a policy in place. But I'm just curious if I were trying to do research, if I said, "Hey, I've got an important closing in the next two days. I need to do the research myself as the attorney." I have to provide the title insurance. Would I have access to the vault? No. And here's, as, as you know, what I'm going to say. I mean, and right now, Rosemary is at the point that if you needed to do that, you would call her and make an appointment, and she, and she would let you in. Okay. Um, I feel better because that okay. is, that happened started to me. Okay. Um, that's what I wanted. That was. The but thing. that, I mean, uh, obviously, that's out of my. Yep. You know. Yeah, understood. understood. Yeah. So I, I'm just wondering if there's a way to make it easier on the public. So. On our website, do we have instructions for how to do that type of work? Here's the process. So if a company did, was going to buy a building in Berlin, here's the process that you need to follow. It's on our website. You need to call this number. 
and make an appointment and then you'll do this this and this before you get here and I, I just want to try to make an idea we haven't gotten that far. I was okay. thinking yeah. of that too. I was yeah, thinking okay. of the website, the newspaper, front page forum, Berlin News to Nose, right. just really putting it out there in a yeah. big way. I mean, you could just put it on the home page of the website. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But That's other avenues boundary. too, because yeah. many people yeah. well, look yeah. in different areas. Right. For That's where a lot of people just look right there. It's one of the first mm -hmm. things you see. You know, and then word of mouth will get around, no matter where it's published. And I know Rosemary had a list of people, and she called them to mm -hmm. schedule. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to so I, take I like away. I'm not trying to. Throw you know, Rosemary maybe out. Person. No, no, no. Right. I'm not yeah. even talking about Rosemary. Outside excuses of well, you know, it's closed, so I can't do my business with the town. Yeah, well, we don't want that. Yeah, right. We agree. Right. Yeah. That's what, none of us yeah. want that, yeah. including you know any right. division here. Yeah. So if we if it clearly says it on the website, at least you know. Did you follow this process? Well, no, I didn't. Okay, well, it says here that we are open for business from these hours. Here are the hours, here are the days. Mm -hmm. Here's how you get in to do your business. Okay. I, I think if we can do that. I think at least then we can say, did you follow this process? Yeah. And if they say, uh, no, but, okay, well, follow the process and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sure. That's Has everybody looked through the warrants? I make the motion to approve general funds accounts payable warrant number 20G23 with checks 2247 to 2298 in the amount of $239,517.10. Payroll warrant 20-25 for payroll from May 24th, 2020 to June 6, 2020 paid on June 10th, 2020 in the amount of $42,690.31. Made reconciled bank statements for the General Fund Sewer Commission and Water Division, made journal entries, and the made budget status report trial balance and delinquent tax report. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Just about everything. <laughs> That's on my plate. Angelina? Angelina? Uh, no, none. Can you hear us okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys. Are you hearing me okay? Yeah, this is the device you mentioned to me. Oh, good. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. Executive session, David? No, thanks. Okay, then I, I do have one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did see an email about an offer. Is that is that offer uh, for the position done? Is everything executed or are we... Yes. Do we have a start date? Yes, 22nd of June. Next. Monday. Okay. Did you tell me that already? Uh, probably not. Okay. I was trying to keep it a secret, but you got it out of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything else on round table? All set. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're at.